What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today and we're shooting on the unreleased XS10. And this video will come out when this camera's announced, but we're on a road trip right now, going up north. We're gonna try and get all the cool fall colors. We kind of just stopped in this one section with wind turbines because it looked kind of sick. We're just on this random dirt road. This sensor and processor has been reviewed to death in all of Fuji's other cameras. So this isn't gonna be really about the image quality, although you'll see how good the image quality is from the sensor, but more about the functionality because this camera is quite a bit different than some of the other Fuji cameras. And basically what Fuji says is this is kind of like the little brother to the X-T4. So yeah, let's get shooting. It's starting to rain, so uh, maybe we'll have to wait. <laughs> oh, I love what your hair is doing there. Keep looking off. I'm looking back off again to your right. I'm gonna wait for that wind to hit. Bring this hand up higher, like into your hair almost. It's so dark. <laughs> Super moody. I like this angle the best, I think. Yeah. Like shooting straight into the dark death sky of doom. <laughs> oh, check these shots. You wanna see some moody stuff? After about 10 minutes of shooting, we decided to leave because it started to pour rain. And as we started to head further north, we ran into some crazy weather with the darkest clouds I've ever seen. But when we finally got clear of them and the sun came out, we decided to stop in at my parents' farm because it was on the way. <laughs> That's got hit in the head. Okay, we're using the kit lens. I should probably be using the 35 because I like it better. Face detection should be on, eye on. There we go. And then looking, yeah, exactly. So come out to about here. I should be able to get some blue sky behind you, actually. I'm gonna try one more a little closer. Let's try the same thing looking straight ahead this time. Yeah. The XS10 has a max mechanical shutter speed of 1 4,000th of a second, and since I'm shooting in bright sun, I actually needed to have a higher shutter speed. So the nice thing is with this camera, you can actually set up to auto switch to electronic shutter when you're shooting above 1 4,000th of a second. My experience with the IAF has been mixed on this camera. I noticed a lot of laggy eye detection animations that aren't even near where the eye is, but surprisingly, most of the shots were tack sharp. These are the best shots of the day, and we're gonna top them with even better shots later. The sun is all over the place. It's gonna come back. It's still better than rain. Although this camera has the same Fuji aesthetic, it doesn't share the same dials and knobs that other Fuji cameras have. Fuji said they wanted this camera to be easier to use for new customers that aren't used to ISO and shutter dials. It has the same 26 megapixel X-Trans 4 sensor found in the X-T4. The grip is much deeper and the body is way smaller and feels way different than the X-T4. And the other cool thing is they were able to put a flip screen on this camera. So like the X-T4, we've got the fully articulating touch screen to so get touch to focus and touch to record and also all the settings in the menu for the silent mode for video. But as I was talking about, this doesn't have the regular dials on it. So you have your mode dials, you have an ISO button and a Q button here for your Q menu. And on the back, there's no D-pad. It's just a joystick, your menu button and your display button. And I actually really like the layout of this. There's not a lot of buttons for your hand to get in the way of. Um, it does feel way different than any Fuji camera I've ever used. It doesn't really feel like a Fuji camera at all. It's got a deeper grip. This is actually a deeper grip than the X-T4, so it fits your hand better, but because it's a smaller camera, your pinky finger is hanging off the bottom a little bit more. And it still uses the old NPW126S battery, which you can find like the X-T3. So they didn't put the bigger battery in this, and the SD card is in the bottom with the battery, which is kind of like a Sony A6000 style system the way they're putting the SD card in it instead of out the side. What else is there to talk about? There's a pop-up flash. And then on the side we have the mic jack, 
as well as USB type C for charging the camera as well as powering it. And you can also get a USB C to 3.5 millimeter headphone jack adapter and it's got HDMI out. And that's basically it for ports. It's pretty, pretty standard stuff on this camera. I want to get more of like, kind of like holding your body and like bringing your arms in and stuff. And you can just kind of move around in there. Don't care too much if hair goes in front of your eyes because I kind of want it to do that anyway. Nice. Tilt your head to your yes. Yeah, let's shoot for another 15 minutes and then we'll book it up north. That's actually amazing. Can you out arch out more? Arch both hands out over the camera a little bit. Isn't that amazing? Those are so I hope sick. that's sharp. That's sharp. I actually really like the feel of this camera, especially the shutter button and shutter button position. It has more of an XH1 style shutter button further down on the grip. Get like one. Yo, the sun's starting to come out. Give me that light. So Fuji was actually able to fit a new IBIS system into the XS10 and it's rated at six stops and using an OIS lens. And in this test, I was trying it out just to see how the stabilization looked and it didn't seem half bad. There's also an IS boost mode, but I wouldn't recommend that for this type of shot. I guess we can go into where the sun is or else we're, we're gonna run out of it soon, right? When it comes to video, it can shoot 4K 30 at 200 megabits per second 8-bit and all the way up to 240 frames per second 1080p. It also has the option to output 4K 10-bit 422 through the HDMI and 120 frames per second in this camera looks amazing. It looks as good as the X-T4. It's me again. You can walk faster if you want. And stop right there. Turn around and look back. Nice. Of course, it also has all the current film simulations, as well as a new menu that adds an in-depth description to the film simulations. So if you're new to the Fuji system, it'll give you a better idea of what it is. I'd kick out that leg a little more, like, yeah and then look off towards the sun a little more. Like, bring it right up to your chin. And look down towards me. I've almost burned through another battery already. Oh no, the battery just died. I have nothing. Grip to the battery. So, so far that's two batteries we've gone through in like what, two hours? So battery life isn't great, but I also remember that this battery was never that great. Plus this camera has IBIS, so in-body stabilization mixed with the screen brightness set to full could be the reason why it's not getting that great a battery life. Even with the sky, it's kind of cool, right? Those all look so good. It's like a different day on this stuff. Yeah, this it stuff. doesn't even look like the same day at all. Yo, Bree, let me send you some of these photos before you go. The camera also has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, so you can use the Fuji app to control the camera with a live preview or just to transfer the images to your phone. It makes it really easy to edit and upload images straight to Instagram if you're into that kind of thing, or you can just airdrop your images to your friends. This uh, Fuji Eternal looks on this thing. 
I haven't been shooting any F-Log, just shooting Fuji Eterna. So that's it. That's uh, our road trip. Thanks for coming along with us. We got some amazing shots today. Thanks to Joe. And uh, Bree's changing right now. We're gonna do one more outfit, but I wanted to do my outro now. I keep looking at the screen because the flip screen, but I wanted to do my outro now before it gets too dark. So this camera, if you're thinking about picking one up, comes in at around 1350 Canadian and 1000 US and that's without any lenses. And with this kit lens that I'm using right now, the 18 to 55, it comes in at around 1899 Canadian. So whatever that is US, I'll put the price down below. But thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. I'm done. Comes in at around, I need to check the prices. It felt really gushy and smushy. This is the warm-up dance. <laughs> All right, so we're not nat. <laughs> the first thing I say. That's ah, fine. We'll just fix it in post. I look pretty well exposed. <laughs> you know me. You know me. Isn't it weird though? It doesn't look like it's like a twister wanting to come down. Yeah, it does. And we're gonna try and sh sh see what we can shoot.